Kevin and Lindsay, we love you both so very, very much. We're so proud of both of you. We know you're going to do fine, be great parents when the time comes, and you're going to be living happily ever after. We love you and always talk with each other. Never go to the never go to bed angry at each other without talking it out. Kevin and Lindsay, I love you both very much, and I know your life together is going to be wonderful. And if it's nearly as good as your dad's and mine, that means you've done it right because we've got a great marriage, and I know you two will have a great marriage also. I love you both, and have a great honeymoon. how happy I am for you and thank you for letting me be a part of your special day and I hope to be able to do a lot of stuff together in the future. Hey Lindsay and Kevin, congratulations on your awesome day today. We love you both. Um, I guess the best advice I could give you would be that at the end of the day, you're still married. Your your mate is the only one that's going to help you in the end. And don't sweat the small stuff. I love y'all. We love y'all. Hey, Kevin and Lindsay. I just want to say best wishes on your. I'm so excited for y'all, and I'll be praying for y'all, and I just can't wait to see what the Lord has in store as you continue on in your next chapter. Love y'all. Hey Kevin and Lindsay from Jeff. Lena, Lori, and Stuart. I want to let you know we love you so much. We're so happy for you. Lindsay, welcome you into this crazy family that we have. Uh, and, and you are such a wonderful blessing from God uh, to Kevin and his life. You absolutely complete him. And uh, Kevin, my brother, I look up to you all the time. Uh, and my entire life I've been looking up to you for your joy, your example, uh, your mercy, your grace, your patience. And uh, we're just so excited and happy for y'all. And I hope that one day your family uh, continues to grow and, and becomes a blessing like my family is to me and to each of us. We love you. See ya. I'm so excited that I got to be a part of this for y'all and I know that the God is just going to work wonderful things in your life um, because I've seen it through a testimony of what y'all have and who you have been and who you've allowed Christ to work in your life. Uh, so I'm excited for you. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. I can't wait to see what God's going to do and have fun.
Yeah. 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 You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just got you. Yeah. so much for being here and on behalf of Kevin and Lindsay and their families. Thank you so much for coming. We are grateful that you're here today and your presence is an encouragement and a testimony to, to Kevin and to Lindsay, your love for them, their love for you and your relationship. So thank you so much. And let me just say, uh, they're glad that you're here for them today on their wedding day. But this day points to many more days that will come. And so they want you to be around for all of those days as well. So encourage them, love them, challenge them, and continue to walk with them on this journey. And Kevin, Lindsay, congratulations. Let all the nerves go. It's no big deal, right? I'm fine. Yeah. It's it's simple Jesus. stuff, right? We're good. Uh, this is awesome. This is incredible. And this is what you've been praying for. And this service, this wedding ceremony really is a worship event. And I know that's your desire as well. We want to honor you. We want to talk about uh, both of you, your relationship with one another, your relationship with the Lord. But beyond that, we want to give the, all the praise and the honor of the Lord mm. Jesus Christ. Because we know without Him, mm. we would be nothing. We right. wouldn't be here today. So uh, all of you here, you know, you've been, you've been invited here, along with me, uh, to share in this wonderful occasion, this this really this wedding celebration as we come to honor this couple but also as we honor the Lord Jesus Christ to share the joy of Kevin and Lindsay and their coming together in marriage but most importantly today we come to worship the Lord and you don't hear that much at weddings most of the time you hear all about marriage and all about marital advice and relationships and all of that but ultimately uh, the, the first marriage was performed by God in the Garden of Eden marriage was not man's idea it was God's idea he wrote the book on marriage and so he receives the glory and the honor when a husband and a wife come together in holy matrimony, in union together, to bring him honor and glory. So congratulations. You know the vows that you make today, the promises that you say here in this place at this time. At the end of this ceremony, you know, you'll be married. But you decide each and every day that stretches out before you what it means to be married, what it means to be husband and wife, what it means to love your wife like Christ loves the church, what it means to support your husband in loving and faithful submission and care. And you'll learn that as you walk through, but as you follow the Lord Jesus and His path and plan for you, you'll continue to experience the blessings that God has for you in this relationship. So you know that real love is something beyond the warmth and glow of this initial time of dating, this initial time of getting to know each other. Real love is something so much deeper and so much stronger than that. Real love grows deeper and stronger with time and with relationship and with growth. And God's already brought you to an incredible moment. But this is really the beginning. This is really the start. This is not the highlight of your marriage. It's the start. And you will have many, many highlights to come through the years. And God has amazing and incredible things in store. 
Uh, love makes burdens lighter because you divide them. But it makes joys more intense because you share them. And that's the beauty of what you get to experience today in your relationship. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 4 to 7, a little bit of verse 8 and verse 13, about love. It says, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy or boast, it's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Hmm. So now, faith, hope, and love, these abide. But the greatest of these is love. And today we've come to celebrate God's love for us, and God's love for each of you, but also your love for one another. And I want to celebrate that. A couple of things, just a couple of reminders. I want to talk about a few things that it, it, it's important to both of you in this moment and this time. So there's a, there are a few themes. And we can be here all day to talk about the themes of life and the themes that, that, that you know, y'all have experienced while dating, getting to know one another through engagement. But I want to talk about three really short, simple themes. The first is, is the theme of grace. Hmm. The theme of God's wonderful, amazing, and miraculous grace. There wouldn't be a husband or wife in this room who wouldn't say, there's been a moment of time where I needed some grace or I needed forgiveness. Everybody does. Everybody does. All throughout life. And you two are here today because first and foremost you've experienced God's grace. Kevin, when you were in eighth grade, trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and grew an understanding of what it meant to have Him be the Lord of your life. You know, Lindsay, you were 14 years old when you trusted the Lord Jesus. And the two of you have allowed that moment in your life to define who you are as individuals. And that's the most important thing. You see, if you don't follow God's plan and purpose, if you don't trust His grace and His mercy, you can prepare for even more difficult times in this relationship because it's your relationship with Christ that will keep you grounded, that will keep you centered, and that will keep you on purpose. It's the theme of grace. But the beauty of grace is this. God doesn't just give us a second chance. He gives us a million chances. Hmm. But He still loves us like we're on our very first chance. Hmm. That is the amazing, miraculous grace of God. That's the kind of grace and love that you're called to show one another and that we're called to show as believers in Jesus Christ. The beauty of God's grace is, in order to qualify, you just have to be a sinner. Hmm. Everyone qualifies hmm. for God's grace. Hmm. And so you've experienced that that grace has changed your life. The second theme is the theme of friendship. And both of you are friends and have been friends. But you see all these folks on this stage and so many people in this room. And it reinforces the idea of friendship and how important that is to the two of you. And how important it is for your friends and for your extended family here. And for your second family here at Second Baptist Church. So not only are Kevin and Lindsay friends, which is a good thing. I recommend that before you get married. Yeah, uh, we didn't but they have a lot of friends. And you see all these people up here. And you got people from California, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, and even places like Kathleen and Warner Robins. You know, I mean, this is really impressive. Lots and lots of people. And I probably missed a state or two, but but Kevin's relationship with his friends, Lindsay's relationship with her friends, it's a testimony of how God has used them to be a friend. Because the Bible says, if you like friends, you must show yourself friendly. Mm. And it's a testimony how you value those relationships in your life. Mm. And so you can look to your left and right and see some people who just really love you and they're here for you and they appreciate your relationship and, and your friendship. And friendship is important to this couple. And uh, that's a good thing. It ought to be important to all of us. The third theme is the theme of Jesus it sounds simple to say Jesus is a theme, right? Because he's so much more than a theme. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the Savior of the world. He's the Son of God. But the beauty of this is he's your Savior. He's your Savior. He's your Lord and King. Your Lord and King. And that is what makes all the difference. And so we talked in counseling those many hours and all the books that I had you read and all the tests I had you take and all those things that brought us to this moment. You'll remember that ultimately I said no relationship will be what it ought to be if Kevin's the center or Lindsay's the center. Christ has to be the center. This is the relationship that matters most, your relationship with Jesus Christ. And for all of you here today, 
Kevin and Lindsay want you to know that's the relationship that matters most. Hmm. Not if you're their friend or their family member or their work acquaintance. Not just if you knew we were having good food today and decided to show up, you know. That's not what matters most. What matters most is your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Hmm. The Bible tells us that God is the loving creator of the whole world. He created everything we see and everything that exists. He's the just judge of the universe. He's creator and king. But the Bible also tells us that man sinned. We rebelled against God the king. We decided that we wanted to do our own thing and we wanted to be king. And as a result, sin separates us from God. But the Bible says that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin, absolutely perfect. To live a perfect life that you couldn't live. To die a death that we deserve. Jesus Christ lived that perfect life, died on the cross for your sins and for my sins, but he didn't stay dead. He conquered death, hell, the grave, and all of his enemies when he rose again on the third day. And he's alive today, offering hope, salvation, and grace to anyone who will repent and believe. This is the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Kevin and Lindsay, I'm going to ask if you will now face each other because it would be really strange if you said your vows to me. <laughs> Kevin and Lindsay have prepared their own okay. words okay. for this special moment and this special occasion. So at this time, we have the opportunity to kind of lean in and listen to what they would have to say to each other during this moment. All right. So, you know, if i got to be serious, I can't do it well. So, okay. <clears throat> so listen up. Um, so you know that this was, this was not a struggle by any means, but just to make it right, um, I prayed a lot, um, for where to go, and so I went to the right place to find exactly what needed to be said to you, so, and you know there's, we talked about this, a thousand and one different vows, you know, to make to you that I can't include right in here, but these are just a few important ones. First off, I'm going to make you laugh. I vow. So, yeah. Um, the next one is to protect you. Um, and then the rest of it, I wasn't sure what to say. So I went to the right place that had the right answers. So um, from Ephesians 5, I'm going to love you just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he, Christ, might present her, um, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husbands, Kevin, Kevin also love your own wife as your own body. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no, no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. And for this reason, a man will cleave it, uh, shall leave his father and mother and shall jo be joined to his wife, and these two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, um, but Paul, speaking with reverence to Christ and the church, nevertheless, each, each individual among you, this is me, Kevin, is to love his own wife, even as he loves himself. And um, 1 Peter 3, 7. Kevin, in the same way, live with your wife in an understanding way. Colossians 3, 19. I vowed to love you, Lindsay, um, and not to be embittered against you. Titus and Timothy tells Titus and Timothy, tell me to be the husband of one wife. I vow that. Um, and as Pastor Jim has already said, 1 Corinthians 13, I vow, and this this won't this won't be lived out perfect. So, but we've talked about that too. It's one of the first things I told you. So, okay. Um, but I vow to be patient and kind and not jealous. To not brag, to not be arrogant. Again, that probably won't be perfect. Um, to not act unbecomingly. To not seek my own. Um, to not be provoked. To not take any account, any wrong suffered. Keep no record of wrong. Um, to, re to not rejoice in unrighteousness, but to rejoice with you in truth. To bear all things with you. To believe all things with you. To hope all things with you. To endure all things with you. And I will probably fail, but love never fails. So now Lindsay will share her vows with Kevin. Okay. Um, most of what I say today, you probably already know. 
You already know you make me smile more than anyone. You always have me laughing. You encourage me and challenge me to be a better person. You're always here for me, and you're the one I want to tell everything to. You truly are my best friend and best match. I can't imagine doing life with anyone else but you. Life is always an adventure when we're together, one I look forward to exploring each day. I promise to always be in your corner. I promise to always be your helpmate. I promise to laugh with you and to cry with you. I promise to follow your leadership. I promise to work when times get tough, and I promise to trust you. I promise to keep you near to me, all your needs, burdens, excitement, and spontaneous plans. And most of all, I promise to love you more and more each day. I promise to hold your hand through life and grow old with you. I promise to choose to love you each day, which you make pretty easy, and to pray with you each day. Hmm. I promise to keep our love strong and not put anyone else above you. I promise to thank God for you each day, for giving me the opportunity to have you in my life as my partner and love while we are here. You are my other half, and I'm excited and blessed to share this life with you. I love you big. I love you big. That's fun. Throughout history, the ring has been a symbol of that which is measureless, precious, and eternal. You know, a wedding ring is made of precious metal. And that indicates the preciousness, the pricelessness of your love. It's a circle that indicates there's no beginning, there's no end to God's love for us. And so today, both Kevin and Lindsay have a ring as a sign of their commitment, a promise of their faithfulness to one another, and as a continual reminder of their promise to each other and to the Lord on this day. Kevin? Hey, you here first. Kevin, take that ring and place it on the ring finger of her left hand and repeat after me. I, Kevin, take you, Lindsay. I, Kevin, take you, Lindsay. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. With all that I am and have. With all that I am and all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lindsay, take that ring and place it on the ring finger of his left hand and repeat after me. I, Lindsay, take you, Kevin. I, Lindsay, take you, Kevin. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And with all that I am and have. And with all that I am and have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we are grateful for your grace, your love your mercy. Thank you that you created this wonderful relationship, the institution of marriage. May it be honored and esteemed by all of us, but particularly today by Kevin, by Lindsay. We are grateful and thankful for all you've done in their life for bringing them to this moment. And we know that you have plans beyond all we think, imagine, or could even ask. Bless them as they continue to seek to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. It is just a little too small. We were laughing in the back of Steel, tried it on, and it fit perfect. And they were like, are you sure you can wear this? And I was like, I think so, yeah. It fits with the muscles.
wow, how do I have so much more in it? <laughs> Lord, we, um, God, we just extend our arms and our hearts to you and just thank you for this day. God, it is true that, um, that we are a picture of grace individually. We are a picture of grace together. Um, release to us, God, um, selfishness. Um, God, give us hearts of servants. And um, thank you for this day. Thank you for how amazing everything is and how um, amazing you are. Thank you for all these people that are um, here to celebrate us. Thank you for the ones that came from out of town, the ones that were here to support us and decorate it and everything. And um, This is just, as Jim said, the beginning. And we are just as dependent upon you now as we were um, before we dated. We're just as dependent upon you now as we were when um, when Jesus lightning hit in a gymnasium, looking both of us a mess. We're just as dependent as we will be when we're 80 or when we have kids. Um, we're dependent upon the cross. We love you, the cross, and just exalt um, the cross today, God, we ask. And um, thank you for our union. Thank you for the beauty of it, and thank you for the fun of it. Thank you for the depth of it, God. Just take us deeper. We ask that you do just take us deeper. And um, we love you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for, thank you just for everything today. Thank you for calming nerves. Thank you for allowing things just to go so smoothly. Lord, I just believe it's because it's all part of your will. Mm. And it's all what you've brought us to do, Lord. Lord, I thank you for um, just the gospel being presented. Lord, I pray that people were changed. I pray that people were brought closer to you by our marriage, by our wedding ceremony, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us as we go into marriage. I pray that you will protect us, keep us close to you and close to one another. Lord, I pray that you will keep um, anything that would distract us from you out of our lives, Lord. And Lord, as, as we already know, we won't be perfect in all these things, Lord, but but you are the one with perfect love, and you are the perfect one. And so we pray that we will just become more and more like you each day. We pray we will follow after you, follow after your, your lead and your guide, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, and I, I thank you for this time. I thank you for, thank you for Kevin. I thank you for his love. Lord, I thank you that we get to share in this together. I thank you that you've brought us to this point, Lord. And as Pastor Jim did say, this is just the beginning. And so I pray, Lord, you will be with us as we continue to go on. Mm. That, that we won't leave you out. Mm. That we will make you number one in our first priority, Lord. Mm. Lord, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. I love you, too. Let's do this, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put that in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that in there. What? Let's do this. <laughs> Hey, sorry. How's it going? Yeah, good. You? Awesome. Good. Okay. Great. I'm going to take a picture of you okay. right now. Okay? We're ready. Yeah. Good. Okay. Can you see everybody? Uh, not everybody, but that's all. Right. Step back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take a picture. All right. Smile like you're happy. There you go. Laugh for real. Do a goofy face. Ready? One. Uh, Never. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Congratulations. Hey, um, now, by virtue of the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, invested. I have the awesome opportunity to, to pronounce you husband and wife. No longer two, but one. One in interest, in destiny, in love, and in life. And the Bible says what God has joined together let no man seek to tear apart. You may kiss the bride. Ready? <laughs> Every kiss deserves a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does.
It does. I know. I know. May I now present to you for the first time and from now on. There we go. Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Kevin Church. Hey everybody. Huh? You ready? Can you get it? Wonderful, amazing sky that I'm sure the Lord made just for you. Everything that I can ever dream about. I thank God for just another day with you.
Bye, you guys. See you later. Come on. Come on. Let me know when you're dressed up. Wait, can they make it? Yeah. Somebody come get her. Where's Aunt Shirley? I'll get her. Get my mom. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and talk. All right. Kevin and Lindsay. Uh, this is mom. Kevin's mom. Now Kevin and Lindsay's mom. And I just want to uh, tell y'all how much I love you, uh, how much you mean to me, and just uh, bless you. Uh, Lindsay is a blessing to our family. Uh, Kevin, you. Are no longer baby precious you're just oh precious that's not now. true that's not true you'll always be baby precious it's just mr and mrs baby precious now oh okay you see All right. but god uh, continue to work in your lives and just love one another and uh i hope you'll always be as happy if not happier than you are today i love you both <laughs> this is your aunt shirley and for you for kevin you know me and for lindsay and I'm proud to be your aunt, your new aunt. But I, the word of advice is, um, from somebody that's been married so many, many, many times, is to do the opposite <laughs> of what I did. Um, you know, the, I heard the preacher say today to keep Christ as your center and not to make yourself, either one of you, the center of the marriage. Um, and that's, a, that's the truth. That's where I failed each time was that I didn't um, keep Christ the center. And that's in everything, not just in marriage. And I love you both. And Mr. and Miss Baby Precious, uh, it, we're looking for a baby, baby Precious now. <laughs> Soon. We love Adios you. and we love you.